situation, of course, where thousands of students got sent back to university and are now forced to self-isolate within days because of coronavirus outbreaks. Well, there are fears that students will not be allowed home for Christmas and there are calls for a reduction in tuition fees. Mm -hmm. Some have accused universities of false imprisonment. We're joined now by students from Manchester Metropolitan <laughs> University, Claudia Hanlon, uh, Neve Everett and William Artley. Dylan Crease and Dominic McCaw Grant. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, let's start with you, Neve. So, you know, we saw yesterday pictures of students in you know, hanging posters in walls, basically crying out for help and making disparaging remarks about the government. Um, but I can understand the building fury and frustration mm. amongst students. I've got one myself going back to Bristol this week. And what are you, you know, I don't know what's he going back to? You know, a couple of hours of, of online lectures a week and very little social life. It's a pretty horrendous uh, university life for you guys. Yeah, we've got one on ours. <laughs> we've got a little help side on our window. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I get it, because this is not what you signed up for when you went to university. So what do you feel about all the restrictions? Well, it's kind of... We've got a bit trapped. Like, we literally can't go anywhere. We're all just stuck in these little prison cell boxes. Like, not allowed to really socialise or do anything, really. And what's the situation with you in your flat? Because you're at Manchester Metropolitan University, but who has tested positive for COVID and how many people are therefore shut down as a result in your bubble? Well, um, me and Will actually tested positive for corona. Like, we got symptoms on, like, Monday and went for a test the next day. And then um, we tested positive, but all of us now have symptoms. So basically, all of Cambridge have symptoms. Like if everyone. Has so you, it. you, all five of you have symptoms. Yeah. 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 So, so we might assume all five of you have COVID. Now, obviously, you know you're bright kids. That's why you're at university. You'll have seen the data, presumably. You know, you share this view of many young people. I don't want to speak for you. You tell me, but that this is this is a disease that doesn't really aggressively target your generation in terms of being something that may kill you. Yeah, literally. Yeah, definitely. It's not. It's not really affected us much. Like, no. I've got coughs and a bit of a sore throat, but to be honest, we're all right. Like, we're just coping. Well, obviously, you're, obviously, obviously the you're self-isolating right now and doing the right thing because you've got symptoms. But you may be in a situation as students where you're not allowed to go home for Christmas. Now, that would be an odd situation for all of you because if you've got COVID now, you're unlikely, uh, as we understand it, to be reinfected and therefore it would be safe for you to go home. What do you feel about the fact that these restrictions may continue until Christmas Day? <laughs> uh, well, I think that could have a big mental effect on people not being able to see their family at Christmas, etc. What, what do you guys think uh, should be done? I mean, you're, again, you're smart people, that's why you're at university. What do you think is the smart way for the government to handle universities and students in this pandemic right now? To be fair, there's nothing really to do. Like, they're kind of like, I feel like you need to kind of do what, like, best in their power to kind of help us. Like, it's, it is a bad situation, but at the same time, like, we're all trying to deal with it as best as we can. And, like, if it does mean you can't go back, then that's how it's going to have to be, you know? And what about tuition fees? Because you're all paying more than £9,000 a year for now it looks like just a handful of online lectures and also accommodation costs. Do you think you should be refunded any money? I think, personally, I think, like... Because I do filmmaking, so while I use, like, the technology I need, like, I don't have access to it at the moment. Like, I'm having to film on my phone and edit on my phone. For people who don't have that technology, even, like, for Zoom calls, like, what if people don't have a laptop or a phone? Like, what are they doing? Because they can't, they can't do it. Right. And what do you feel about this revelation in The Times that the bars in Parliament <laughs> do not have to shut at 10 o'clock? They can stay open later? That's ridiculous. <laughs> 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 We didn't know that. We, this is the first of us hearing Right. That. Well, that's, that apparently is the case. They don't have to shut. They have, they have an exemption. That's just not really fair. It's every single thing that's you know, close that test. They that's literally kicked out some. Like, it's just a bit... Do you think if there was a way of making universities a secure bubble where you all agreed to stay in the confines of universities, if they could make it happen, would that be a sensible way to go forward, do you think, where you all just agreed to socialise with each other and weren't allowed to go out into the wider community? 
that's that's essentially what they've done. They've said that we can like socialize between flats and said like because we're in like a bigger bubble. So like where well, we can all mingle. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, guys, we wish you all the very best of luck. It's a nightmare time for yeah. everybody. Get well students, soon, by the way. It's supposed to be the best years of your life, and there you are, trapped in these ghastly rooms. Um, but I wish you all the very best. You just have to make the best of it, I'm afraid, until we work it yeah. out. Yeah. Good luck to you. Um, the Go to Parliament and have a drink there. <laughs> the President of the Union of Students, Larissa Kennedy, uh, says basic needs are not being met, and television presenter Ulrika Johnson's daughter is a student and feels that they're being unfairly blamed. Join us as well. Along with the Shadow Secretary of State for Education, Kate Green. Kate Green, should these students be given their money back? I mean, one student there was telling us that, you know, it, online lectures are, are all well and good, but if you've got practical courses you're trying to follow or you need to go to the library or you need access to a computer, you're... I mean, frankly, you're just not getting the education that you're paying for, are you? No, this is a really desperate situation. Some students have to be on campus because they need access to equipment or, or labs or whatever it is. Others could perhaps study at home, but they don't have all the digital equipment that they need. There is a digital divide and poorer students may not have the, the laptops or the internet connections that they need. Um, and of course, uh, many students feel that they did expect to come to university for face-to-face -face teaching. And so they're concerned if they're not going to get any of that at all, although they will understand the need to keep everyone safe. I think it's a really complicated situation because um, obviously students feel that uh, they need the help and support and the priority has got to be to get them the best possible education. But there are many universities that we're in considerably difficult financial circumstances too. Uh, and so there is a balance to make sure that students are treated fairly, but that we can't allow any university to fail financially. We've asked the government repeatedly to guarantee that that won't happen. I'm, I'm afraid we've not had that guarantee. One thing that hasn't helped, uh, Kate Green, is what you said yourself about the coronavirus crisis, because a week ago you said we shouldn't, that Labour shouldn't let a good crisis go to waste. Why did you yeah, say that? Here's that? Piers, that was the wrong thing to say. I regret it. I know it will have caused pain and offence to people who've suffered under this terrible pandemic, and, and I should not have said that. What I would say is that the crisis has exposed all sorts of things about our economy and about the pressure on our public services that we've got to learn from. We have to learn the lessons of this pandemic. So, for example, the workers who earn some of the lowest wages, who have some of the least... Uh, good terms and conditions are those we've most depended on in this crisis. We, we have to make sure that... We had, we had Lisa <laughs> Nandy on the programme uh, early last week. Why was it she apologised days before you did for what you said? Well, let me just say really clearly now, Piers, to you and to everyone who is watching, I apologise profusely for those comments. They were the wrong thing to say. Um, and I'm particularly um, ashamed that people should feel that I was seeking to make political capital out of a crisis, what I was trying I mean, to say very... Respect, Kate Green, I was what, trying to say well, you, very... You were, you were. That's exactly what you were trying okay, to do. I mean, you, well, said no, 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 should, I, you said Labour should not let a good crisis go to waste. What's good about this crisis? Nothing is good about this crisis. What I, was, what I should have said, regret that I did not say properly and appropriately, was that we need to learn from this crisis, and I hope that we will. Why, why didn't you apologise for five days? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's really great to have the opportunity to do it on something like Good Morning Britain, which means that I can meet, reach many, many people who will know that I'm offering this apology. OK. okay. But no, no explanation for why it took you five days? Well, I've been expressing my regret as often as I can whenever I've been asked to for years. Well, you were asked about it immediately and it took you five days. That's not true. I don't remember being asked immediately, but um, well, I just want well, to repeat you, what you, I'm saying. You had I'm the media asking that. for a reaction and you didn't apologise for five days. You know that. I can't recall that, Piers, but I just want to say again now, I'm very sorry okay. for what I said. For the you didn't get a single <laughs> media inquiry for five days about what you said. Is that, is that what you're saying? I, think we, I remember one, um, and I remember we responded, and I'm sorry if you felt that was inadequate in, in terms of the way we responded. I just want to say again, I really regret what I said. I really regret the pain and offence it's caused. It was the wrong thing to say, and I want to apologise to everyone who feels particularly 
uh, but that um, was okay. offensive and hurtful in the circumstances okay. that Kate they... Green, <laughs> thank you. Let's, let's uh, turn back to the issue uh, of the students, President of the National Union of Students, Larissa Kennedy. You have made the point that some students' basic needs are not met. Now, uh, can they not go out and get food? Can they not get food delivered? What's, what's the situation with basic needs? So I'm hearing from some students across the country where there are security guards outside of these blocks where students are being kept, um, stopping people from leaving, coming and going, uh, where students are being discouraged from getting deliveries uh, and told by the university that they'll deliver food uh, and that delivery has not arrived and so they've gone for the day without food. I've heard from other students who, you know, they've turned up uh, with an amount of toilet roll told with no notice that they're going to be locked down uh, and wondering where their next roll of toilet roll is coming from. And it just feels like these are disgusting conditions for students to have been trapped in. Have you established the legal position, whether they have to stay behind closed doors, so to speak? We've heard from Manchester Metropolitan University who say we are unable to prevent our students from leaving halls, uh, but we trust that they will do the right thing. So students can actually go out, it seems. I mean, first and foremost, we're, of course, encouraging people to do the right thing for public health and to follow that guidance. Um, but we are questioning whether this is, is legal um, in terms of making sure that students get the access to the basic amenities that they need, to food, to toiletries, and to all the things they need to just, just to survive lockdown. Uh, and in cases where that hasn't been the case, whether it has been legal uh, to keep them cooped up in that way without the access to the things that they need. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. Ulrika Johnson, you have a daughter in a second year at Norland College, Bo, um, and she's training to be a nanny. She was born with an underlying health condition, a heart defect. So you must be particularly concerned, I guess, about her going back to an environment. We just have five students there who all think they've currently got COVID, for example. Yes. I mean, at the very beginning um, of lockdown, Bo was absolutely terrified and went into a lockdown a week before the nation went into lockdown. Um, and then as time went by, actually, uh, I became increasingly concerned about her mental health because she was basically sort of essentially locked up in her room. She has contact with her friends via FaceTime and ho however else they communicate. Um, but the whole thing of being kept away from that, that social thing that they really thrive on became a massive concern for me. And so after three months, she decided when she was allowed to go and bubble with another family to do so. And her present sort of situation is that um, the college is doing a mixture of lectures and virtual, but she's also in a situation where they do a lot of placements, where they go and work in situations. And those have been constantly under review. And I have to say the university has been excellent in keeping them informed about things. But I think Bo's approach now is strangely uh, a lot more kind of relaxed than she was initially, because initially, obviously, everything that was happening to all of us was unprecedented. Uh, and now she feels like she's had a little bit of a taste of normal life and is is having to, I guess, take some risks, yeah. which means... You're, 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 well, I you're think Swe that you're Swedish. the national picture, actually. You're Swedish, Ulrika. What, what, what's, obviously, everyone talks about Sweden as being the great saviour of all this, although the evidence doesn't really show that. Um, what, what are you hearing, though, from Sweden about what they do differently which has been successful? Well, um, being Swedish, essentially, the Swedes have not had anything imposed on them. They've been asked to do things and as they tend to be um, very community minded they tend to do what they're told so for the obviously the vast majority of Swedes are abiding by guidelines so to speak but they've kept the country going so there is, there are no real massive impositions my nephew has been at school throughout has been on school trips throughout. Uh, my sister's been working sometimes from home, but she's 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 stayed working. And I think that they feel very proud of the way that their government has dealt with the situation. 